Hi, I just got my Rigol MSO 2072A scope and I was playing around a little bit with it uh, especially the logic analyzer function um, I hooked up the logic analyzers to a FPGA Cyclone uh, dev board and just to run a very simple program uh, it's uh, 7 uh, segments uh, time 4 display and it's running a, a time uh, counter of tens of seconds, seconds, tens of seconds and minutes. Um, what I wanted to try out is the pattern uh, uh, trigger and um, yeah, I found something funny or disturbing or um, here in the in the top you see the four uh, seven segments uh, common uh, uh, control node so you see that it's uh, uh, controlling uh, the first uh, segment, second, third and fourth and here at the bottom you see the individual segments so A uh, to G. Um, I wanted to trigger um, the scope when it the segments uh, shows uh, zero on the uh, second segment so there. Um, and as you can see something is going wrong I think I, I put every, every setting good in the scope but still if you look at it you, it's triggering on the 7 and it's on triggering on the 0 and I only set it for 0 Okay, uh, let's go to the trigger menu here you have the trigger menu and here you can um, say that it, the type is a pattern so I have a pattern selected so that's good and um, here at the bottom you can see what the pattern is so the first, first few four bits are the segments or the, the displays, uh, the seven segments displays common uh, connection and you see I put it on high low high high so that should be the second uh, display then I uh, uh, connected the A to G uh, segments to the lower uh, port of the logic analyzer just to have it all on one port, it's more convenient um, and I put all uh, lows in it except uh, the G and uh, put it high there and that should correspond to a zero on the segments but it's not working for some reason it's uh, also triggering on the 7 so let's see why um, let, uh, let me uh, just stop the scope at the 7 so I say uh, single and it will trigger now on the 7 and let's see where it's triggering now so we're zooming in zooming in zooming in and here we can see it's triggering on a whole different uh, point uh, as I should expect. Okay, let me uh, again do a single trigger and now for a zero. So trigger it and bam. And we knew off. And here you see it's good. So here you see it's exactly only the G is high the other ones are not so again for the 7 bam all high bottom one is so, so something is wrong uh, I'll come to that later uh, to compensate this um, I had to first I build a, a, a clock with it um, so if I uh, I can show you the clock, I put a clock on the on the dot segment, and the dot uh, that is on oh, wait on off uh, on off the channels. I go to channel D15. This is my clock. So I put let's go back in normal mode. Zoom out a bit. 
zoom in. And now we should see. Oh, it's uh, 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 running, uh, not running. Okay. Now we have a clock. So here at the bottom, you can see a clock. And I put a clock just in the middle of all the transitions. So you have a very good uh, transition uh, measurement of your pattern. So if you go to pattern again, and uh, we say, okay. Um, I have now D15 and D15 should be now high. So if I put it on high, now it will only select of trigger on a zero, like that. You see? That's perfect. Just the way I want it. But normally with a seven segment uh, control you don't have a clock. Because yeah, the seven segments don't need a clock. So what's going on? Um, let's uh, let's zoom in a bit. So we have here our trigger, dead in the middle. Oh, sorry. And every zero it should trigger. Because this takes too long, I'm going to uh, say to the to the pattern uh, trigger mode uh, that it uh, has to trigger on the tenth uh, tenths of seconds. So I go to this one and I say, okay, you are low, and this one is. Oh, sorry. Of course, I had to. Yeah, and that one is high. So now it should trigger every time the tens of seconds hit a hit a zero. So there you have it, and that's perfect. It's like a charm. See, no problem, whatever. Trigger again. Turn off the clock. Put it on X, and there you go. Seven. Oh, sorry, probably have to uh, program in the hold off. Okay, and here you see it. It's triggering all over the place, and. Here it's even worse, you see, it, it, it's triggering not only on the zero, but it's triggering everywhere. So what's going on? So I set them on single, okay, I have now single, let's zoom in a bit. Let's zoom, 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 put that a bit in the middle, okay, single trigger again, again. Lost my and here, here we have our problem. You see that? Uh, maybe I can even trigger this multiple times. No, 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 no. Sorry. Ah, there it is. So even my that my program says, okay, um, you have to set all the outputs of the FPGA at the same time. The scope doesn't see that for some reason. So we have um, normally a transition should be all flat, but here you see that the D segment is fur farther away than the other ones. Um, and I think I know why, but still, it's a very interesting behavior of the uh, the logic analyzer pattern. I also um, uh, connected channel one and channel two. So let's 
see what they, they are doing. So I zoom in like that. Actually, let it run. No, it has no. Okay, uh, so pattern, and I put the the source again on the clock, so we have a better um, trigger point, like that. Oh, sorry about that. So now. If you put it in normal mode, there we have a stable trigger. Every time it hits zero, now it triggers. You see? Um, okay, the top ones are not important now, so I go to the menu of the logic analyzer and I can say on off the group and I put that on group 2 so bye bye then I say okay um, I want my wave set to be large and I want to reposition it all over the screen okay um, so I connected to channel 1 to D14 and I connected channel 2 you can see here to the 11 okay every time uh, the tens of seconds hits 0 you see that uh, it's going uh, it, it's triggering um, now let's see how the the trigger point looks like so I have a steady trigger I can do this center it on screen zoom in center it on screen zoom in D15 is not doing what I but what it should do for some reason it's staying flat ah okay sorry about that then I should be here of course to So here you have the um, channel 1 is now uh, this, at the same uh, point uh, at D13 and channel 2 is at D11 and you can see that it's, it's variating uh, quite a bit actually you can zoom in further and here you see the deviation between those two and also that the, the analog channels takes a very long time to, to settle um, the probes should be let me see it's the RP3300A and I thought it was a 300 megahertz probe but it doesn't say um, but here, you, you, uh, if I stop this, here you can see that we have a quite a, a big deviation. So with a cursor, and I can say manually cursors, put one on there, and put one on there. We have a deviation of well, almost one nanosecond, or a little bit more than one nanosecond. So that means that in this small time, the pattern track uh, pattern is actually 
uh, seeing a zero and that's why it's probably not uh, is, is, is mul it triggered multiple times on the display um, and also what's interesting is that uh, the, the analog channels so the channel 1 and channel 2 is are far behind the digital channels the, so I think that in high speed uh, buses you also can have a, a bit of a problem to, to trigger on, on it and that you don't have the um, exact um, level of, of trigger every time um, I think that uh, the, um, this behavior uh, maybe uh, is because I am controlling um, some LEDs with the FPGA making it a uh, uh, low, lower impedance uh, output so the FTPJ output pins have to work, har work harder than for instance controlling a uh, chip so that can be why there is so much deviation um, but it is a tra trap for people that want to trigger on uh, with a pattern uh, on, the, on the logic analyzers so if you have a clock or you have to build a clock or you um, yeah you, you will have multiple triggers on points that you don't want to have a trigger um, what I'm missing uh, probably in the trigger menu is you, you have a hold off so it will hold off the trigger for uh, 100 nanoseconds you can play with that but um, you actually need uh, some sort of stable state t timer so uh, something like hey I have a trigger uh, check that trigger in time X if it's still that trigger if you can adjust that then you can adjust it for now okay if you have a stable uh, signal uh, for two nanoseconds then you have a real trigger so let me know if uh, I did something wrong you have the same problem uh, for now I'm just going to play on with my new MSO that's a great scope bye